Hello, N4H and H here. I want to talk about noise blinkers. Um, this is, is going to apply to just about any radio on the market. I just happen to be sitting in front of the ASU FTDX 5000 MP, but uh, what I'm going to show you really is just applies to most radios. So you look at the S meter there, you'll see about an S5 little grind here. That now I'm going to I'm going to tap, let me pan over a little bit on the FTDX 5000. There's a button right here, NB, noise blanker. I'm going to tap that. Each time you tap it, it'll turn on the noise blanker. It'll, and, and then if you tap it again, uh, it just cycles through. So, so watch the display right along in here. See noise blanker, noise blanker wide, no noise blanker. Noise blanker, noise blanker wide, no noise blanker. Okay, so back over here where you can see the S meter. So I'm gonna tap the noise blinker button. See the noise knocks down and the buzz goes away. But you're gonna hear something else come in and I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, see, noise, noise is knocked down. There's a level adjustment right here. This radio has knobs. Um, there, this is a noise blinker adjustment for VFOA and this is for VFOB. You want to run these at the the lowest level that will take care of the noise. So I just see noise blankers enabled, but I've just turned the level all the way down. See, and look at the S meter. So I'm going to bring it up just to the point where the noise goes away. Uh, you don't want to go any any further than that because the, the higher the level of the noise blanker, um, well, the worse the selectivity of your receiver. And uh, I'll, I'll discuss that in a minute when I when I get into what you're going to hear. Again, let me let me turn the noise blinker off. So about an S5 grind there, probably coming from a power line. And let me just say, <clears throat> the noise blinker is a band aid. Only use it when you have to. Try to get the power company to take care of it. Now I will tell you, it could be other sources too. I've had uh, baby monitors. Uh, wall warts, especially wall warts associated with um, you know cheaper electronics devices, but even um, the wall wart that powers a um, a baby rocker, you know the modern day things you put your baby in and it'll rock them for you. Um, the uh, neighbor's plasma TV, um, LED cheap, especially cheap LED bulbs you put in your home. Um, wireless phone chargers there's so many sources of noise these days but of course we always blame the power lines and i have had issues with the power lines and the power company has been out here and took care of them but i think i've uh got a few more um i want to uh, uh, get back in here though and show you what i was talking about when i mentioned selectivity so um, noise blankers enabled and you see the noise drop down let me see if the guy's still there there's a DX station at 195. Yeah, there he is. Okay, so I'm going to tune down to 192. So I'm three kilohertz away. And there, there's a little, there's a little trick that's going to happen here that I want you to be aware of. You're going to wonder, well, I think my noise blanker's not working. Okay, so there, there, no noise blanker. Again, you can see here when it's enabled and there's the wide noise blanker. Well, that's for wider noise. I'm just gonna give you a simple explanation of that. If one noise blanker doesn't knock it out, try the other one. In the menu of the Yaesu FTDX 5000 and your radio will probably be equipped similarly um, if you have a different radio. You tap here and in the menu, there are some adjustments for uh, the noise blanker. Uh, in the DSP, this noise blanker is part of the DSP unit level width they default at 50 but you can adjust them and honestly you know move them up or down to try to deal with the noise you're you're trying to uh, knock down but again always try to get rid of the source of the noise because the noise blankers affect the selectivity of your receiver so let me illustrate that I'm going to get out of the menu here look what's happening on the S meter right there look at this let me turn the volume up. Isn't that crazy? So I'm going to turn the, turn the noise blanker off, and you'll see now I'm just back to that grind. 
Um, and by the way, that comes and goes sometimes if it's power lines, because what's causing that, um, believe it or not, it's the lack of moisture in the air. So the voltage on the power line components, it'll, you know, it'll build up and then it'll discharge when it gets high enough voltage, you know, it'll discharge even across the air. Well, the drier the air, the higher that voltage builds up to before it discharges and therefore, um, you know, it makes it worse. When you got moist air, higher humidity, uh, you'll have, uh, the, usually what'll happen is as the um, uh, voltage level on the, on the uh, power lines is building up, what they're trying to do is get to ground, okay? So as the voltage builds up, if it finds a, a path to ground, um, it, it'll jump to it. It'll literally like arc over to it. But if the humidity's higher, it can get there through the, you know, because water conducts, right? So if the humidity is higher, then it doesn't build up to as high a level before it just goes ahead and arcs over or discharges over to, could be a nut, a bolt, you know, oftentimes de definitely... Uh, hardware on the uh, power pole is usually the source of the noise. By the way, it's almost never the transformer. Uh, the power company tells me that those are rarely cause any problems other than just they fail. But um, so most of the time the noise is loose hardware on your power pole that call the power company, they come out, they take care of it, and this goes away. So I apparently have something that has uh, cropped up around here and uh, I've got to get the power company out here. But in the meantime, if I'm trying to work a weak station, I want to pull them out, I need my noise blanket. So I, I enable it. Now sometimes, now it's working right now. A while ago though, you saw that really way up here. It went way up here. Well, wait a minute, was the noise blanket not working? Actually it was. What happens is, and this is what I want to get into, the Noise blankers affect your selectivity, you know, so selectivity is the ability of your receiver to select only the frequency range you want to listen to and block out all others, right? So, um, if that you know, if you look at some of my videos where I talk about mu tuners, uh, VC tune on the FTDX 101, the mu tuner, um, or, or the built-in VRF, it's called variable RF here on the 5000. But if you, if you uh, opt to buy the external optional mu tuning pre-selectors, they're even better than the one built in the radio. FTDX 101 and uh, DNMP have the VC tune pre-selector. Uh, ICOMS uh, 7610 has something called Digicel. Those are pre-selectors that, that are more in the front end of the receiver and so you're actually beginning to select out what range of frequencies you want to hear and even better, what, which ones you want to not hear earlier in the receiver, which is always better. But late, you know, later in the receiver, you've got you know, your, your uh, roofing filters and such as that. Um, they, they follow after uh, bandpass filters or pre-selectors. So, uh, you know, you want to try to trim as much as you can out before you get into, especially before you get into the audio stages of the radio. But uh, so noise blankers interfere with that selectivity. And a while ago, what you were hearing, he's, he's not t transmitting right now. You were hearing that guy on 195. And the stronger they are, uh, there he is, now listen. The stronger the signal, the more you'll hear that, that strange sound that's almost like you think it's noise, right? And, and, but it's not. Let's see if he's... Uh... Uh, that's not him. He may not quite be strong enough. Let's see. Yeah, he's, he's producing a little bit of it. So if I turn the noise blanker off, I get the grindy noise. I turn it off and the grindy noise goes away, but then I may start hearing him. What I want you to understand with, from that is you might accuse somebody of splattering, you know, being too wide, more than three kilohertz wide and, and up and down the band. And sometimes it's not really them, it's the fact that you've got your noise blanker turned off. Um, because again, it reduces the selectivity of receiver. So you wanna use a noise blanker only when you have to. Try to attack the source of the noise first. But in a case like this, you know, it's a Sunday afternoon. I'm not going to get the power company to come out here today. If I want to, if I want to be able to work a station um, that, it, you know, and the noise is getting in the way of me hearing a weaker station, 
then I'm going to have to use my noise blanker. But then if somebody is strong, even though they're three kilohertz away, uh, what's going to happen is, is I will, I will actually hear that what would sound like them splattering three kilohertz away. So before you go accusing somebody of splattering, always make sure, oh, my noise blanker's on. Turn it off. And if you no longer hear what you thought was splattering, it was your noise blanker causing that. Because again, it, it affects the selectivity of your receiver. So there we are with that S5 grind. Noise blanker knocks it out. And again, you got two noise, two level of noise blanker. Some radios do, some don't. Um, short duration. The W means wide duration noise. And again, in the menu, you can go in and you can tweak here on a scale of, uh, of essentially, you know, one to a hundred. Uh, you can tweak these. Um, let's say the wide uh, noise blanker is making a difference. Well, you can get in here and you can fine and adjust it. But again, also, let me remind you. This is the level of the noise blanker. Only turn it up. See there, I turned it down. Only turn it up enough to where it takes effect. The more you turn that level up, the more it's gonna degrade the selectivity of your receiver. So just be careful about that. What, what you were hearing a while ago, and just the stronger station's not transmitting anymore. Yeah, he's not very strong. So, but what you were hearing earlier there, that little funny sound that was running the meter up higher than even the noise was, was something akin to splatter. And that's why I said sometimes you might accuse somebody of splattering and they're not. And I've heard arguments like that before. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, wonder if that guy's got his noise blanker turned on because I'm not hearing that guy splattering. So just be aware of that so you don't wind up in a a confrontation on the air with somebody that you think splattering and in reality what it is is your noise blanker. Now let me mention something else. I have a friend who has a 5000 and he told me one night, he said, Doug, you're distorted. I said, what? And another guy came and he said, no man, he sounds great. And so I asked my friend, I won't say his name, I said, do you have your noise blanker turned on? He's got a 5000. He goes, oh, you're right, I do. And he had it on and he had it wide open. So uh, that's another thing. These modern noise blankers that are, that are um, built into the DSP, to the digital signal processor of the radios, they're really not as good as the good old-fashioned analog noise blankers. I've got an old radio over here, a Yaesu FT-890, yes, FT-890, from 1991. The noise blanker in that thing is just fabulous. Now, again, still, even the old analog noise blankers could affect your selectivity somewhat, but that one, I ran it mobile for years. It got rid of my ignition noise, and I just left it on all the time because it was never an issue. And, uh, there was no going in and tweaking a menu to adjust the width or any of that. So, because uh, you'll find out in uh, finding some of the other radios out today, there's width adjustments, there's timing adjustments. The Yaesu FT891 has that. Uh, you got to sit there and fiddle with all that. Well, we'll get this. I took the FT890 out of my truck and replaced it with an FT891. Noise blanker in the Yaesu FT891 is absolutely abysmal. Great radio, love it. Have two of them. One for hiking. Uh, for some it's on the air, another one in my truck. But when you have to use the noise blanker, and I do because of the ignition noise, stronger signals like above S9 have a tendency to sound distorted, almost to the point, it sounds like almost like they're gargling. And you can go in there and you can get into the menu and mess with the timing and the, and the width and all that, and you can help it, but it's still not as good as my old uh, you know boat anchor Yaesu FT890. So uh, modern uh, noise blankers is cheaper, I guess, you know, I'm told, for them to do it in the, uh, uh, within the a DSP unit, but I don't find them as, as good as the vintage ones. Now, to be fair, even some of the older vintage radios, some of them had good noise blankers, some of them didn't. We would even talk about that, you know, yeah, well, I like this radio, but boy, the noise blanker's not as good as the one I had in my other radio. So even back in those days, uh, not all noise blankers were equal, but I, I have to say in particular, my FT-890 was the best noise blanker I've ever uh, played with of any radio I've ever owned or played with. The one in the FTDX 5000 admittedly is not bad though. Um, if you don't run it too high, see again, run that level only as high as you need to to get rid of the noise. If you don't run it too high, uh, I don't really notice an issue with distortion, but again, it does affect the selectivity of the receiver. 
the guy that we were hearing a while ago that was strong here at 195, it it was it was because uh, it, the reason we were hearing that splattery noise down here at 192, three kilohertz away, was indeed because of the noise blanker and what it was doing to the selectivity of the receiver. Let me see if I, I see something up the band there. Let's see if I can illustrate this again. Oh, that was some somebody transmitting a photo. Let's see. Slow scan, you know, hangs around right around here. Uh, let's see, maybe that's a QSO. Okay, there we go. There's a strong signal. He's at 273, so I'm going to go down to 270. Noise blanker off. So there's my grindy noise. Noise blanker on, but look, it doesn't seem like the noise blanker is working, right? It didn't take noise away. What I'm hearing now is that guy. So sometimes it may even seem, well, my noise blanker's not working. But then what's, what you're doing is uh, you're replacing the grinding noise because it really did knock it down. But you're replacing it with what sounds like splatter because now you've, you've degraded the select selectivity of your receiver a little bit. See, the noise is knocked down. But see, look at that. When that guy talks, it comes back. So just be aware of that with noise blankers. Uh, especially, I don't want you to get into a confrontation on the air with somebody because you thought they were splattering, and really what it was was it was caused by the noise blanker on your radio. So uh, here, here we go. Let me let me give you a synopsis of this. Some some um, uh, I'll guess say rule of thumb to operate by. Try not to use your noise blanker. Use it if you have to, but try not to. Use it to get by until you can take care of what the source of the noise was. Like I said, in my case, I had a cheap, um, you know, uh, one of those, uh, a cheap uh, a wireless phone charger, Chinese. Um, man, it was even interfering with my two meter rig. It was bad. Um, but plasma TVs, uh, LED light bulbs, especially those that you might get, you know, that are of lower quality, you want to buy a, a, a really, I won't mention name brands, but you want to buy a really good name brand, maybe something you would buy, you know, at, an, at a store here, like beware of ordering on eBay, things like that. Um, and again, little wall warts. I have, it took me a while, but I figured that out. Oh, and my daughter has a fish tank and the power supply that ran the lights for the fish tank. Wow, was that noisy. So I have, have uh, scrounged up all sorts of uh, power supplies, alternative power supplies to put on things like that, that um, took care of those kind of noises. So I think what I'm hearing today, I'm probably back to some, some uh, loose hardware on a power pole out there that the power company will come out and take care of. In the interim, I'll use a noise blanker only because I have to. So uh, just just be aware, noise blanker affects the selectivity of receiver. Um, and uh, in all honesty, uh, all, not all noise blankers are, are created equal. I do find that even though this is a more a modern rig and it's handling the noise uh, blanker in the in the DSP, um, it's better than a lot of the other ones uh, do it. And again, I, I hate to say it, I'm, I love AC radios and I love my FT891, but that noise blanker in the FT891 is absolutely embarrassing. Um, and I, I know I'm picking on the 891, but I own one. Other radios from other brands even also have uh, terrible noise blankers uh, that are being um, managed by the, by the digital signal processor. So I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Um, and I want to thank uh, Chuck Bigby, my newest Patreon. Um, he actually joined a couple of weeks ago, but I, I wanted to acknowledge him here. I haven't shot a video in a couple of weeks. And so, and I want to say I really appreciate uh, the Patreons. You guys help keep the channel alive. If you want to help out, uh, if you haven't joined as a Patreon uh, for, for my channel, uh, go to www.patreon.com slash n4hnh, www.patreon.com slash n4hnh, my call sign, and uh, help out uh, all that you can, and we'll keep the, the channel alive. Okay, uh, 73 from N4HNH.